Greetings, welcome back to Astral Gaster. Yes! No! Sorry? Good day to you, young sir. May I say, your playing of Titus Andronicus's come yes. was excellent well. A wondrous performance, Mr. Bell. Aye, well, they let me play her in the end. Your crushed Beetlejuice thing worked very well. Mr. Burbage decided to keep me in the role when he saw my rosy cheeks and that. Indeed. Or oh, sooth, I am glad the cochineal beetle treatment proved efficacious. Ah, well, uh, I'm not so sure I am, innit? My newfound loveliness has stirred a passion in Mistress Burbage. She's been trying to move to me. On my word. But surely, Mr. Bell, if Mistress Burbage's attentions occasion you discomfort, you have merely to tell her so. Make it plain you wish your relationship to remain professional and bid her abstain from any amorous advances. You? What? Nay, sir. If I hear her, she'll be vexed and I could lose my job. Know you what I mean? Yeah. Ah, I see, yes. If she were to take umbrage, she might use her influence over her husband to prevent you from getting work. Well, I do have a recipe for a very effective aphrodisiac. Nay? Then let us see what the stars advise. Of How course. might Humphrey Bell calm the ardor of Mistress Burbage without it costing him his career? Mistress Burbage has a colic temperament when it comes to affairs of the heart. She prefers to be the one in charge. Okay, and what does that mean? Mistress Burbage is troubled with a habit for indulging in lustful passions. <laughs> oh, Leo is for the heart. Okay, I guess this is the one. I think Mistress Burbage's behavior can be attributed to her excessive sanguinity. To wit, there is an imbalance of blood in her body. It compels her towards an indulgence in lustful passions. What do you mean, like? She's ill or something? Kinda. Grabbing me backstage and trying to beg me. Tis an imbalance of blood making her do all that. So, uh, how do I help her fix her problem then? Her problem? Oh, nay. Mistress Burbage is not ill. Forsooth, indulging in her lustful passions is a most healthsome pursuit, which doubtless brings her much pleasure. Indeed, the only person who has a problem with her lustful activities is you. How did it come to that? Perchance you could find a means of adding cooling and drying foods to the lady's diet to counteract the fiery moistness of her sanguinity. I suggest uh, myrtle berries, lettuce and mallows. Hmm. Methinks I can add them plants to the morning potage she takes during rehearsal. And if that don't make her move from me, I might start adding poison in it. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear you say that. Seventh one. Achieved. Nice. Sir, I have the best of tidings. I have managed to use my influence to ensure my husband is safe from the executioner's block. Indeed, my petitioning of courtiers and their wives has been been so successful that the royal court is now abuzz with talk of the innocence of Captain Fortescue and how he has been the victim of a gross miscarriage of justice. A sonnet upon the subject has been composed and I hear tell that Mr. Shakespeare intends to write a play about it. Your most grateful of crowns, Sybil Fortescue. Not you! How come you're still alive? Good evening, Mr. Moore. How may I do your service? I have a mind uh, to take up a profession and would have your counsel on it. Okay. For I must say, your advice thus far has been most excellent. Really? Counseling me not to yes. let sly succubus Emma Dyer did veritably save my life. Indeed. 
I have heard it rumored that her husbands have a lamentable habit of dying, if you follow my meaning. In short, their deaths are most unnatural and not at all accidental. Do you understand what I'm telling you for? Yeah, yeah. Aye, I do, Mr. Moore. Pray afford me a moment to recover from the excess of shock and surprise I do feel upon being told of the lady's true nature. Now, you say you wish to take up a profession. It is a military career you're considering, I presume? You wish to distinguish yourself in battle? Of course not. It is a career in the church. Uh. I have a mind to take holy orders. You wish to become a clergyman? I tell, how came you by this notion? Twas given me by the top dog himself, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Of course. The hunting chum of my father's. I, the Archbishop, is a crack shot with a musket. You should see him at it, foreman. Give the man half an hour and a pouch of lead shot and he'll turn your duck pond into duck soup. It seems the Archbishop has had his eye on me for quite some time. Verily, indeed. He says I show great promise, and that under his personal tutelage I should rise very rapidly. He even said he has a mind to make me Bishop of Salisbury. Ah, yes, the much coveted Bishopric of Salisbury. But before I make my final decision for me, yes. I thought I'd better come to you first. Aye, very wise of you. Then let us see what the stars foretell. Would my querent Lancelot more enjoy success as a clergyman? Why not? Well, he would have to drop his fancy clothes. Vile hidden motives artwork promises will be broken. Moore's ambitions are misguided. He's being unrealistic about his suitability for the church, although kind of, that's kind of right. Serving under the archbishop would be unpleasant. Good angels would transform Moore, turning him away from his present course of idleness and dis dissipation. God will help Moore with women. London will resound with fluttering gossip of Moore's piety and seriousness, thus enhancing his romantic appeal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go with that one. You should indeed take holy orders, Mr. Moore, for the stars do indicate that life as a clergyman would transform you. It would turn your mind away from vice and idle pursuits. I see. So, there is your answer. Ah, oh, yay. Uh, but do the stars give any additional reasons as to why I might pursue a career in the church? Aside from the fact of it being godly and such? Well, my chart does also suggest that doing so would enhance your eligibility as a suitor. For taking orders would serve as a signal of your wisdom and virtue. Oh, verily? Aye, it says here that if you become a clergyman... Ah, yes, that God will reward you with ladies. God's under That's us. pretty straightforward. And to think all the hours I've wasted learning to play the lute for such a purpose. I thank you, Foreman, for you have helped me find my true calling. You're welcome. I shall take holy orders and begin dispensing wise counsel and spiritual guidance to all the ladies of London. Come on, give me that. This was the last one. We solved the Sir Lancelot, Sir Lan of Lancelot and his letter. <laughs> oh, we didn't see her for a long time. Give you good day, madam. Good day to you, sir, and well met. And how fares your husband, Lady Dyer? I recall you were worried for his health. Twas the Dyer beat. The disease you judged him as having. He yes. got the wounds that never healed. Oh. You mean the wound on his lordship's hand? But I recall you saying it was quite small. Oh yes, that wound was, but he acquired many more. One evening, whilst we were summering at our country estate, the stone railing of our balcony gave way, and he fell into some particularly thorny... Oh! Verily? Ouch. How distressing. 
And he never recovered from the scratches? Nay, twas most tragical and so forth. Well, I am sorry to hear of your husband's passing, but, uh, madam, are you quite well? You do not seem yourself this day, if I may remark on it. Dr. Foreman, I am more myself than you have ever seen me. For during these past years, I have been playing a role. A role that has served me well, to be sure. But I am grown tired of it. She's been killing her husband. I'm not proud of my dissembling. I'm not proud of some other things besides. And doubtless you are come to unburden yourself by confessing your, uh, what those things are. What? Nay, of course not. As I was saying, whilst my dissimulations have afforded me wealth and status, such a life as I have lived has not fulfilled me. For though I have been married many times, and known many men, I have always lacked one important thing. A moral compass? And a child? Is love. In short, I have found love, Dr. Foreman. Okay. And the object of my affection is not one of these privileged popinjays I've met at the royal court. Nay. Is a real man, a man who knows what it is to make his own way in the world. Oh, you, you mean to say, you mean you and I? Verily, upon seeing him play Tamara in Titus Andronicus at the Globe one even, I was, well, my heart was took. I see. You are in love with a player then, I take it. Aye, and I wish to marry him. But first, I would know whether such a match be advisable. Is our love true? Or is my considerable coin and property where his true affections lie? Such a deception would not surprise me in truth. Well, nay, doubtless it would not. Let us see whether the stars can tell us. But first of all, let me see... Uh, Emma Sharp, this is her, right? Okay. Emma's boo hides evil intentions. Emma's head has been torn, she's doubted in her hopes. The mind of Emma's beloved is on the coin he would inherit when Emma dies. If Emma and I were romantic partners, I would not trust her. Emma's duty as a wife would be impossible to fulfill. It is cruel to deprive a man of children. What the hell? Emma's relationship with her young man has changed her. A marriage between Emma and her boo would be faithful and enduring. Yeah, let's go with that. The stars bless the match between you and the young man. They do not think it would be bad for him in some way. What? Do not judge. The chart indicates that your relationship with this young man has changed you. It would be a faithful, lasting marriage. Verily, I must own I dared not expect such a happy ending to my story. I thank you heartily, Dr. Foreman. You're welcome, I guess. Wait, what? How come we didn't... She didn't visit us once? Really? That was the last one? What? She didn't come for the fourth case. Okay. Interesting. Day, Mr. Bell. I see here in my notes the last time you came to us for counsel regarding Mistress Burbage and her tender advances. Aye, and the advice you gave me to cool her down and that worked her treat. Since yes. I've been putting them herbs in her potage, she spends so much time in the privy, hardly ever see her now. That is. Well, I am glad my advice achieved the desired outcome and Mistress Burbage is no longer bothering you. Tis about another lady I'm come this day. Tis a member of the audience who comes to all my performances and brings me flowers and sweetmeats. A mature lady. A widow, innit? Another one. On my word. You are most ill-fortuned, Mr. Bell. Verily, are no young players safe these days from being preyed upon by lecherous old ladies? Tis not all ladies, Dr. Foreman. 
not this one anyways. Emma ain't like any of the other ladies I've met. In truth, Dr. Foreman, we wish to be wed. I love her, innit? Ah, then what is your trouble? Well, I've heard tell of some vexing things. There are them that say she has a heart of stone and only marries to get her hands on a man's money. Though I have none, and she's bear rich. But she has been widowed many times, and there's even a rumor saying she's had a hand in her husband's deaths. <laughs> How shocking. I, I must own to being a trifle shook by it, and maybe a bit excited as well, uh, but, but mainly shook, innit? Doubtless you are, for it is most frightening if there be any truth to these rumors. We must consult the stars and see whether it be wise for you to marry. Should Humphrey Bell wed this wealthy widow, and what will become of him if he does? Oh, well, he's not fish, so there's nothing dangerous for him. The lady's psychotic instincts regarding the amassing of wealth have changed. The rumors about the lady are cruel. Humphrey can expect a pleasant inheritance from this lady as she is very rich. In time, and if he keeps faith, Humphrey will have children with this lady. A death will occur on the couple's honeymoon. Honeymoon. Beneath her gentle exterior, the lady harbors hidden motives. The lady has a creative approach to marriage and is not to be trusted. I think I'll go with this one. Yeah. Because he doesn't really care about the money. Money. It has been my privilege to guide you over the years in matters of work and in life. Wisely, I hope, but certainly with the greatest sense of care for your well-being. Indeed, I have come to think of you as a father might think of a son. Tis a responsibility I have not taken lightly, and in loco parentis, as it were, I feel an obligation to... Sir, begging your pardon, sir, but I'm gonna stop you right there because I need to know in it. Should I marry Emma or not? Yes. I believe you may safely marry this lady, Mr. Bell. The stars suggest the rumours you did hear about her are needlessly cruel. So this all lies then? Well, not quite all lies, nay. The stars do also indicate that the lady was formerly most fixated upon the acquisition of money. Though it would seem she no longer harbors such pecuniary passions, such as is consistent with her desire to marry a penniless player such as yourself. So, they just decided I shall marry my dear sweet Emma. I'd be honored if you came to see us wed, Dr. Foreman, if you be not too busy in that. The honor shall be all mine, young Humphrey. Okay. I'm still. Shocked that she didn't come for one consulting. Ooh. Good morrow, Mistress Payne. What? It has been quite some time since I last saw you. Uh, did you ever hear from the Archbishop? I recall your husband was intending to write to him, expressing your concerns about the Continentals. Aye, we did write, but he never replied. <laughs> Not that I am surprised, mind you, as they do say that Archbishop Whitgift is a very idle man. Not to speak of the unsavory goings-on within the walls of Lambeth Palace. They say that in the great dining hall, the Archbishop and his guests do feast and carouse from dusk till dawn. And tis said that in some of the palace rooms, they indulge in fornication and sodomitical sins. Verily, indeed. Then, doubtless that leaves him very little time to reply to every... Truly, methinks being surrounded by such decadence and corruption of the flesh is likely to have made the Archbishop very hard. Aye, bearing witness to so much vice would make a man very hard indeed. Ah. Uh... Hard, Dr. Foreman? Insensible to the needs and difficulties of ordinary folk such as you and I. Verily, I do not wonder that such a hard man gave me no satisfaction. Which is why I am come to you this day, Dr. Foreman. Something did trouble me last night, and I would have you tell me what it might have been. I will if I can, madam. Prithee, describe it to me. Well, at first was the noise of a boat that did awaken me. <laughs> I got up out of bed and went to the window to see what was. 
As you know, on 4th Street, we are right by the banks of the Thames. In the moonlight, I could just make out a ferry crossing the river, loaded up with large barrels. And you thought it suspicious? Aye, indeed, for the hour was very late and the boat's lamp was not lit. I did not wake Mr. Payne to ask his opinion, for, in truth, he has told me he wishes to hear no more about the things I see from our window. So, I am come to you, for I can have no rest until I know who those men were and what they were doing. Who knows what foul deeds may be afoot in Lambeth Town? Mayhap the men I saw were Catholic spies, engaging in some manner of nefarious plot against of the realm. Of course. Then let us see. What does God have to say regarding this boat you saw crossing the Thames last night? Was it some kind of elaborate Catholic plot? Or is there a more likely explanation? Let's see. Mistress Payne is unpleasant and delusional, right? Mistress Payne is unhappy with her children. They are doubtless, doubtless grown up and are now neglecting her. Mistress Payne wants to change the world. That is the legacy she intends to leave. The goods the boat was transporting were of questionable importance. The boat's journey was undertaken for evil purposes. The information should be reported to the authorities. Loyally, ideally, a friend, a friend or acquaintance with some connections to them. The ambitions of the loyal untamed forces are at play here. And this one was. Yeah, I'll go with this one. Be not afeard, Mistress Payne, for there is a perfectly innocent explanation for what you saw. The men in the boat were naught but thieves and smugglers. Doubtless they were transporting contraband French wine or heady spirits. Verily, Dr. Foreman, if that yeah. is what the stars say, then doubtless tis true. Though I know not why English folk go to such trouble to drink that continental wine made with those decadent foreign fruits. Mr. Payne and I drink naught but good British wine made from wholesome English turnips. That doesn't sound good at all. Okay, we'll have to do it for one more time. Hear ye, hear ye! Catholic terror plot to blow up Parliament foiled! Gunpowder barrels discovered in cellar! Hear ye! Oops. Disturbing reports just in from Westminster that barrels of gunpowder were discovered in a cellar under the Houses of Parliament late, late last night. Sources indicate that this gunpowder plot was a Catholic conspiracy led by Robert Cuttersby and assisted by a, continent, by a continental by the name of Guido Fawkes. No, 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 go away. <laughs> I don't need your letter. Go away. Good day, Mistress Payne. Leave and never come back. That I am, Dr. Foreman. This day I am taking my niece on a lovely outing to see the cockfighting in Vauxhall. Ah, there is a cockpit in Vauxhall now, is there? Aye. And a very fine one. And I did think we need a nice day out to turn our minds away from that terrible affair of the Catholics plotting to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And my niece does so love the cocks. <coughs> Doubtless, madam. And the gunpowder plot was indeed a terrible business. They say it was the doings of a group of young Catholic nobles from the Midlands. Do Stop. They? And that the gunpowder was ferried across the Thames and landed no, in no, darkness. No. Doubtless, it was the very same boat I did tell you about, Dr. Foreman. It was most ill of you to tell me what I saw was merely smugglers transporting foreign wine. <laughs> Aye, may I hope I was in error there. But this day I am less concerned with the state of the nation and more concerned for your health, madam. For I do remark that your eyes are most red and irritated in appearance. And you seem troubled with a hacking cough. For how long have you had these troubles? Only these past few days, and as well as my eyes and my cough, I do also find it a trifle vexing to breathe. Then let You're dying. Then the stars. What ails Mistress Mary Payne? Her evil soul trying to get out. The Queen is suffering from bloodshot eyes, a condition that is very itchy eyes. 
The grand's lungs have been harmed by the inhalation of noxious odors. Maybe. The grant is suffering from the green sickness, a disease that can provoke short wideness owing to a build up of venereal frustration. Okay, I think that might be it. Ah, madam, your symptoms are occasioned by noxious odors. Most likely you did lately inhale a large volume of smoke. Uh, mayhap your chimney requires cleaning. Indeed it does not, Dr. Foreman. My cleanliness is unimpeachable. I have my maidservant scour the house from top to bottom every day. Ah, then I cannot be sure what has occasioned your... Hold. What is that acrid odor? Methinks it does emanate from your clothing. Madam, have you been taking part in the anti-Catholic pogroms that Lambeth has witnessed these past days? The burning of houses and shops? The lynching of priests from trees upon Lambeth Green? Mayhap I have, and what of it? You should be congratulating me and my ilk for keeping you safe, and for sending a clear message to those Catholics who would plot against our Parliament and blow us up with gunpowder. Madam, these Catholics are our neighbours, our colleagues, and our friends. I beseech you to consider your actions, madam. Are not Catholics people too, just as we are? If you prick them, do they not bleed? Aye, and their flesh does burn the same and all. I fear I do not follow your reasoning, Dr. Foreman. Are they not subject to the same diseases, healed by the same cures as we are? And if not cured, then, alas, taken so soon, so needlessly, I did never have the chance to... Oh, my sweet Avis, can you ever forgive me? Is something the matter with you, Dr. Foreman? On my honor, you do seem most troubled. Mayhap you should be going to consult with a doctor yourself. God keep you well, Dr. Foreman. Blessed day. You know where the doors are. Be advised that if you are experiencing any of the following plague symptoms fever, abdominal pain, lumps on your groin, oozing foul pus, send word to local authorities and a team of carpenters will be dispatched to your place of residence to board up your house so that you may not roam about infecting others. Please ensure that loved ones are ready to be deposited deposited in the play cart when it passes each evening. Corpses deposited on the street outside of collection hours will incur a fine of one shilling. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we have eight. We still haven't found, met with one person, I think. But I might be wrong. God give you good day, Your Grace. How fare you this? Know you whether the plague will reach as far as Lambeth? Have you seen it in the stars? Ah, the plague that has begun to spread throughout London. Rest assured, Your Grace, if the plague does indeed reach Lambeth, the people of Lambeth will have me, Dr. Simon Foreman, at their service. My renowned strong water cure will doubtless be required. I bid you, read the stars for me now. Will or will it not reach Lambeth? Of course, as it pleases, Your Grace. Let us see what the stars have to say. Will the London plague reach beyond the city walls to Lambeth? Ma it might. The rumors of the plague reaching Lambeth are not credible. Death from the plague is God's punishment for our sins. 
The Archbishop has nothing to fear from the plague, he has but to exercise patience and the threat will pass. It is the Archbishop's duty to stay in Lambeth and help fight the plague. The Archbishop must embark upon a voyage. Lambeth society may be peaceful now, but people can behave unpredictable during a grave health crisis. Ah, yes. Uh, the stars are most clear on the matter. Very clear indeed. Then what do they say? Tell me! Uh, well, before I give you my answer, I would have your decision on granting me that medical license we spoke of on your previous visits. I am sorry, Your Grace, but I must insist upon it. Uh, I would gladly do so, but I find my hands tied due to various episcopal and doctrinal... <sighs> uh, as I see you are determined not to let the matter rest, I will speak true. Some years ago, the Queen's physician, Dr. Richard Smith, did write me a letter on behalf of the College of Physicians. He warned me in the strongest terms against granting you a medical license. So you see, I cannot grant you a license without raising the ire of the College of Physicians. But now, now, Dr. Foreman, doubtless you are thinking that a man of my position, one of the most powerful men in England, should not be so easily put off by such a letter. However, and methinks you know this from your own experience, the College is a terrifying organization that will stop at nothing to get their way. One would be better off to find the Queen herself than the licensed doctors of London. For whilst our Lord God in Heaven may be merciful, the College of Physicians is not. I verily, I must own that what you say is very true. But mayhap I will furnish you with a letter of recommendation to the University of Cambridge. They may confer upon you a medical degree, and thereby a medical license. I thank you, Your Grace. Now, prithee, answer my question. Uh, I have bad news, Your Grace. Lambeth will not escape the plague this time. Uh, things are quiet now, but as I learned during the plague of 92, events may change a pace. You must leave Lambeth before it's too late. Hmm, I feared as much. I must begin preparations for the removal of the palace household to Sussex. Before you go, Your Grace, I believe you were intending to write me a letter of recommendation. Um, well, in fact, I no. the quality of advice you have given me over the years. And if I judge that you have acted with some skill, then then I will have my new chaplain, Lancelot Moore, no. a letter of recommendation Wait. and have it sent to you. Good day, Dr. Foreman. Oh, I thought Lancelot was dead. Okay. Yes, we've got it. Sir, I thank you for your recent submission of several letters of recommendation. I am pleased to inform you that these letters, being of sufficient quality and number, have been credited towards the ob obtention of a medical degree. Please find and close to your license to practice medicine. John Cowell, Vice Chancellor, University of Cambridge. Finally done it. You cannot board up my house. Tis not a plague house. You are mistaken. I do not have the plague. Let me out of here. Know you not who I am, you fools? I am Simon Foreman, doctor of astrology and physic. Fie upon those ungrateful wretches. Have I not always been there for them when they needed me? Am I not the doctor who risked his life to cure them during the plague of 92, when all the other doctors and their high-born friends fled London and left them to die? <sighs> Indeed, mayhap next time I will think again before risking my life in the service of the townsfolk, if this is the way I'm to be repaid. <sighs> and forsooth, if my deeds are so easily forgotten by the living, what chance is there for my work to be remembered by generations to come? What will the world know of me once I'm gone? This speaks of quiet violence exacted by a gent gentle, gentle woman with hidden motives. 
I will be remembered for having given something valuable to a psychopath to hide somewhere for sooth how strange, whatever could that be? A potion comprised of costly ingredients? My name will be mentioned in court during a famous legal battle. It will be a long time before my ingenious contribution are properly recognized by historians. Good angels will, will ensure the manner of my death serves as a testament to the intelligence, accuracy and soundness of my methods as an authority in the field of astrological science. My, rela my relationship with myself will change when I embark upon a voyage to wit, my death will occur while tra traveling. No, I think it's this one. Many years will pass before my work is to be given the recognition it deserves. Men living centuries from now, mayhap even ladies, will study my treatises and casebooks with great care and write histories about my work. <laughs> but hold, does not Mr. Shakespeare tell the lives of great men upon the stage? Perchance playwrights will use the wondrous stage machinery of the future to illuminate my work. Mayhap the story of my life will be told by players, for my work is of great historical importance. And now that I have a medical license, not even the College of Physicians has the power to discredit me. But if I am to go forth into the world to make any further contributions to the advancement of medical science, I must find a way to pry these wretched boards off my front door. William! William! Fetch me a crowbar! And so it is the end of the Astrogaster. <laughs> but we never met William. God damn it. Oh well. Thank you very much. I hope you liked Astrogaster and his ridicule history. And amazing narrative. <laughs> No, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon.